Almost every small farming community has one, the old farmhouse, and the mountain town of Hotchkiss is no exception. My step-grandmother lived here, mm -hmm. and she was getting old, and my folks bought her a house right uptown here. That was in 1968, and since then, Dick and Janice Hotchkiss have lived in this brick farmhouse built by Dick's great-grandfather, Enos Hotchkiss. His photo hangs on the wall, along with hundreds of others collected by Janice. And of course, I'm into the history and antique stuff. The house was built in 1889, and today looks every bit as good as it did when first built. The post office was here. The funerals were supposedly held in the bay window. That was back before the town of Hotchkiss was established, a mile or so up the road to its present location. Here's the town. The family still has the original town maps. Enos Hotchkiss was an early frontiersman and entrepreneur. He was a mover and shaker. He was always looking for opportunities to improve the country. Even if it did mean jumping the gun to get the best plot of land for himself. He rode to the top of the cemetery hill. He picked this place. He knew they were going to move the youth cell. So that was probably 1879 or 1880. So when the time came to uh, that the settlers were allowed in, why he came in probably only five days early. With a claim staked and a small cabin built for shelter, Hotchkiss's attention quickly turned to building a barn. They built the barn before they did the house. That's his initials over the door. The barn was the farmer's bank, so they got that done first. The barn's brick construction is unusual, but like many pioneers, they used what was available. Wood was not that plentiful, and uh, the clay was here on site. Building the barn quickly became a family affair. Anus Hotchkiss' nephews started a brick-making company, and this is why you see so many brick buildings here in Hotchkiss. And it took me a year, to 1886, to build it. Since then, the barn has served the Hotchkiss Ranch well. They had some pens and put sheep in there during lambing time. That's what my granddad told me must have been after World War I, that they had German prisoners in there. I loved it for storing my antiques in, in the last 10, 15 years. Until one fateful day in August of 2010. We were sick about it. You know, you just can't imagine till you see it. A storm with winds estimated at up to 90 miles an hour tore through the North Fork Valley. The west end of the Hotchkiss barn lay right in its path. Well, it was just a tragedy. You know, that microburst was our own private hurricane or tornado. In true mountain community style, folks came out to help. And I knew the family probably wouldn't have the resources or the insurance to cover such a large amount of damage to such a big building. A coalition of architects and historians moved quickly to get the Hotskits homestead listed on the National Register of Historic Places. And we did get a state historic fund grant for planning the work. Funding the actual restoration is not quite so easy, but community leaders agree the Hotskits barn is an icon and needs to be rebuilt. This just allows history to just to be right there, right in your view. It's not a museum, it's real life, and, uh, and, and it, it's just got a real flavor to it. You know, it's the authentic backdrop of our agricultural heritage, and it's really important to maintain these icons. This site is visible from everywhere, and so it's going to be an icon that's always going to be part of the landscape.